Unfortunately, this summer there was a well unfortunate situation up at the University of Maine with the loss of one of their players, a player JMU re recruited. Let's go sideline to Jack Fitzpatrick. Thanks, Kurt. Darius Miner was a first year defensive back for the University of Maine when he passed away this summer during offseason workouts. He was a local product. He was out of Locust Grove, Virginia, and he played his high school football at Orange County. And like you said, JMU did recruit him among with a lot of other schools, and he found himself at the University of Maine. JMU, along with a lot of other CAA schools, will be sporting a decal on the back of their helmet this season with his initials DM on it. Back to you, Kurt. Thank you very much, Jack. Certainly a sad story. Find out a little bit more with our on-field reporter, and that is Jack Fitzpatrick about Coach Clark of Robert Morris. Jack? Well, Kurt, like you said, Coach Clark, no stranger to the sidelines here at Bridgeforth Stadium. He did get his start, though, back in 1998 when Alex Wood hired him just 10 years after he was the Orange Bowl MVP for the Miami Hurricanes when they beat the Oklahoma Sooners in that game. He then went on to have a short career in the NFL as well as the AFL. And now, Clark, he's had stints across the nation, but most recently at, at the University of Albany. Now he's getting his first gig at the head coaching gig. Back to you, Kurt. Completed pass first time. We get a completion to Gonzalez. All right, both these programs are involved in the Be the Match program, and we're going to take you down to field level where Jack Fitzpatrick is standing by. Mr. Fitzpatrick, how are you? I'm doing great down here, and that's right. Both teams are involved in the Andy Talley Foundation Get in the Game Save a Life initiative, and together they've signed up over 700 bone marrow donors, and they've helped have two bone marrow transplants, and Robert Morris's own running back, Jonathan Wannett, actually donated bone marrow just last spring to an anonymous recipient. So these guys are doing good things both on and off the gridiron. Back up to you guys. The uh, tackle. Let's go sideline. We talked a little bit about uh, Jimmy Laycock. And with more, let's introduce you to Jack Fitzpatrick. Thanks, Kurt. Well, Jimmy Laycock, like you guys said, he's been the head coach of William & Mary for 39 seasons. It's kind of unreal that he's been there for that long and that he's had such an impact on the program, both on and off the field. On the field, he's the second winningest head coach in Division I football at a 246, 190, and 2 mark. Off the field, he boasts some of the highest graduation rates in the CAA and FCS. He has a lot of players that have gone on to the big stage and had some huge success, like Mike Tomlin, the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Sean McDermott, the head coach of the Buffalo Bills, and Dan Quinn, an assistant coach of his, is now the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. He's done a lot for William & Mary, and he looks to add another thing to his belt here today. Back up to you guys in the booth. Go down to the sideline with Jack. Kurt, Daka has had himself a game tonight. It seems like on almost every snap he's in the backfield. And we saw it last drive from the Tribe. It's causing a little bit of uh, annoyance from them. Two unsportsmanlike conducts they got last drive. And Daka continues to just find himself in the backfield along with the rest of his D-line. Back up to you guys as we watch the rest of this uh, first half. To uh, Jack Fitzpatrick, he's got a laundry list of siblings. A laundry list is right. Like you said, Dylan and Riley have been having themselves a game today. But also you have Mac and Tab Patrick. You have the Carters. You have the Robinsons. And then of the past, you have Clayton Cheatham here today. But his brother was a tight end for the Dukes, along with Rashard and Rakeen Davis and Brandon and Devin Ravenel. Coach Houston at the uh, CAA Media teleconference on Monday, when, when asked about how there's just so many siblings on this roster, he said, we forget about it a lot of the times that we have that many siblings on our roster. But at that same time, in no way does it surprise me. He, he credits a lot of it to the positive atmosphere, the positive experiences, and the locker room environment in at JMU that brings so many siblings in, and a lot of them come in, and both brothers have a huge impact on the program. Back up to you guys in the booth. Thank you very much. Out as we'll go down to field level again with Jack Fitzpatrick. Jack. Well, I think a lot's the answer when it comes to the amount of streaks JMU football's on right now. Head coach Mike Houston, since he stepped foot into the Valley, he hasn't lost a home game. That's 18 straight home games he's won. That's best in the FCS, and it's second best in all of Division I football behind Alabama. They've won 18 straight CAA games. They've won six straight against Commonwealth teams. And they've won 11 straight true road games against FCS opponents. The last time Houston lost a game at home, well, you have to go back to his time at the Citadel. It was September 16th, 2015. It's something that doesn't happen a lot for Mike Houston. Back up to you guys in the booth. 
Streak of streaks. Thank you very much, Jack. And, and Jack Fitzpatrick. Thanks, Kurt. Well, Kurt Signetti, he inherited a team that hadn't had a winning season since 2010, and he got them to an 8-4 and four mark last season, 6-2 and two in the CAA, but he's had a lot of success everywhere he goes. He was the head coach at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. He had a 53-17 and 17 record there. He was also an assistant coach for Alabama in 2009 when they had their undefeated year and won the national championship. He was their recruiting coordinator. He helped recruit Julio Jones, Mark Ingram, and Dante Hightower. And when he was at NC State, he also helped recruit Russell Wilson, a future Super Bowl champion. So Kurt Signetti's looking to bring some of that to Elon and create a perennial CAA powerhouse down there in Elon, North Carolina. Well, Jack, thank you very much. And, and this is, of course, uh, this pun is intended. Elon is, as the Phoenix are, on the rise. And let's join Jack once again, Jack. Well, both teams kind of struggling with their rushing attack right now. I don't believe either one over 100 yards. And this, the, both teams are great rushing teams. Not only are they tops in the CAA, they're two and three rushing-wise in the CAA, averaging over 200 yards a game. And both defenses have been able to control the trenches and really maintain their type of rushing attack. Back up to you guys in the booth. You're absolutely on the mark there. Uh, 61 yards rush. Right and uh, see with what Jack's, Jack has in store for us, Jack. Well, Elon, they trail right now in this one, 9-7. to seven. However, they're no stranger to that. This is their eighth straight road game where they've trailed in the second half. They've gone on to win five of those games. So this is no no road that Elon has not gone down before, and they're, they're ready for this one. Back up to you, Kurt. And the quarterback down to field level and rejoin Jack Fitzpatrick. Yeah, that's right. You called them the Long Island Express and that two headed back of a monster backfield for him. They've been putting up numbers all season and so far today their offensive line has been opening up gaping holes for him and both Leotoni and um, their other back has had, has had a great time just running into those holes and having lots of success there for Stony Brook. Back up to you guys. Thank you. Bone injury and off-season workouts. It, there was talk that he may be redshirted this season, but he wanted to come back, and he's made his presence known. He came back last game against Villanova. He had six tackles, one for loss, and a fumble recovery. And here in this game, he's kind of doing the same thing, and he just came up with that huge tackle there on that Long Island Express. Back up to you guys in the booth. Thank you very much, and uh, tackles him down. Let's go down to field level with Jack Fitzpatrick. Jack? Thanks, Kurt. Both of these teams' defenses have been all over the field, and they've held each other's offenses rushing attack, both coming in with great rushing attacks. They've held them below what they normally average through halftime. That's led by JMU's big man in the middle, Adib Atariwa, who's come back from injury against Villanova and now Stony Brook, and he's done a great job really shoring up that interior line and making all runs have to go to the outside. Back up to you guys in the booth. There's a... Tyler Gray with the field goal, 41 yards out. Ethan Radke not in today's action. Nothing serious. As Gray hits his 24th career field goal. Dukes have the luxury of two very capable field goal kickers. That's back to the end zone, and Leotine will take a knee for the touchback. Take a look at that scoring drive summary for the Dukes. It was five plays, 25 yards, 139. And let's take a look at the field goal from Tyler Gray. He is from Winchester, Virginia, just about an hour north of Harrisonburg. He is seventh all time on the JMU charts with the 24 field goals. Let's take it down to field level as Jack Fitzpatrick has a little word or two for us. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Yeah, during the press conference this week at O'Neill's, Coach Mike Houston talked about how he wanted a raucous fourth quarter crowd, and this homecoming crowd has really gotten it going. A couple, a couple people have started to trickle out a little bit. However, it's still going loud down here, and on that Tyler Gray made field goal, they made sure Stony Brook heard it. Back up to you guys in the booth. Yes, indeed. Uh, Mike Houston has made a point of emphasis for the fans to stay.